the darkness of our sin, the grace of God rises like the dawn. In the coldness of our hearts, hope rises like the sun. Into all that is dark and cold in our lives, the light of God shines. From the sleep of sin and the dust of our death, a new day rises, and with it our hearts. O God of grace, shine your light upon us. Come to us and renew us, O God of life. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God, for the light of Christ. Hallelujah. This is the Passover of Christ, the victory of love over sin and death, evil and violence. Thanks, Thanks be to God, God, for the light of Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. A reading from Exodus. The Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to God. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today shall never see again. Yahoo will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then God said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to go forward. But Moses, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. Then God said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, God tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Israel saw the great work that God did against the Egyptians. So the people feared God and believed in Yahweh and in God's servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to Yahweh, who has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider God has thrown into the sea. God of life, from all that oppresses, set us free. From the wounds that paralyze us and sorrows that will not heal. God of life, set us free. From the tyranny of our fear, from the grip of envy and shame. God of life, set us free. From the power of sin and all that keeps us from you. God of life, set us free. From the lure of evil and violence, from all our hurtful ways. God of life, set us free. From our slavery to the darkness, into your gracious light. God of life, set us free, and grant us your grace. Amen. Hear the good news from Luke's Gospel. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women took spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. But when they got there, the stone had already been rolled away. And when they went inside, they couldn't find the body. And suddenly there were two men in dazzling clothes standing right next to them as they were standing there perplexed. And they saw the men and they were terrified. They bowed their heads to the ground. But the men said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember what he said to you when he was with you in Galilee? That the human man must be turned over to sinners and be crucified and then on the third day rise again. So they ran from the tomb and they went back and they told the others everything they had seen. This was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and the other women. They told all the disciples everything they had seen, but they thought it was an idle tale. They didn't believe them. But Peter got up 
And he ran to the tomb, and he stooped down, and he looked in, and he could see the linen cloths lying there by themselves. And he went home amazed at what had just happened. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us sing. Morning is breaking, sorrowful morning, as we are breaking, haste to the tomb. Oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for God is good. God is steadfast love and endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom God has redeemed from trouble. We sat in our darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in arms. For we had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Our hearts were bowed down with hard labor. We fell down with no one to help. Then we cried to God in our trouble, and sa God saved us from our distress. God brought us out of our darkness and gloom, and broke our bonds asunder. O oh God, we thank you for your steadfast love, and endures forever. Amen. 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 How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Christ's death? Therefore, we have been buried with Jesus by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with a death like Christ, we will certainly be united with the resurrection like Christ. We know that our old self was crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Christ. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Christ. The death Christ died was a death to sin, once for all. 
but the life Christ lives is life to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive, alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. The stone, has, the stone has been rolled away. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The tomb where they laid him is empty. This is the work of God, wonderful in our eyes. To the one whom everyone scorned, we give our praise. The gentle one is victorious, the innocent one over the powers of this world. Christ on your cross, our life and death have struggled. But love has overpowered death itself. The Lord of life has absorbed death and reigns. Christ in your grave, our sin lay dead and defeated. The Lord of our life has risen and brought us into glory. Christ in your rising, we are brought to life. Victorious Savior, have mercy on us all. I think about those powerful but simple words of Paul to the Romans that we're baptized into Christ's death. For so many people, Easter is, Easter is all they know of our faith. They don't know the, the Good Friday part. They don't know the suffering part. They know suffering. They just don't know how much a part of our faith it is. There's something so redeeming about knowing that the promise of Easter is not just the promise of happy endings, but the promise of transformed suffering. The promise that all that's wrong in the world is transformed by the presence of God that's always this life-giving presence. Sometimes those people who don't know the rest of the story, I don't think I'm picking on anybody here, those Christmas and Easter folks, they don't realize what they're missing. Because when we come to this special day, it's not just a big celebration that our team finally won the final or whatever. We bring with it with ourselves, all of the torment and the sorrow and the heartbreak of our lives. This is where all of our heartbreak belongs. This is where all of our suffering leads. It leads here. That's the part the rest of the world doesn't get. But we don't leave our suffering behind, we bring it with us. And our suffering always takes us here to the empty tomb. When we think of Easter as being separate from all the bad stuff in life, then all the bad stuff in life becomes separate from Easter. But in fact, Easter is something that flows out into every moment of our lives. Every moment of our existence is God's reworking of all of our death and brokenness and misery into something new, into life, into healing. So Paul gets it, that we're baptized into Christ's death. Everything we experience is the death of Christ, the surrender of the embodiment of God to life as it is. Trusting that there is this part of life as it is that we never can quite see. And that's the resurrecting power of God. The love that always changes things. The love that cracks open buried seeds and makes that seed appear to just disintegrate and fall apart and die. That's how the seed grows into something new. And none of these plants around here look like the seeds they came from. <laughs> None of you look like the suffering you've gone through. None of you look like your failures and your losses, your guilt and your sorrow. None of us do. Because God cracks open those old parts of our lives in the soggy, well-rained-on soil of our lives. That's what we're baptized into, this continual process of being raised to something new. 
So I invite you to meditate on this mystery that you are baptized into this process of dying and rising with Christ. It happens every moment. It is the nature of existence itself. In the same way that the entire universe is really just an echo of the Big Bang, your entire life is just an echo of the resurrection of Jesus. It's every moment reverberating, glowing with the glory of God. I invite you to hear the birds celebrate the good news. And if you are moved to come forward to the baptismal water, touch the water, interact with the water, let it speak to you, remind you of your baptism and this mystery that we are baptized into the death of Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. But first, let's sing. This is a song for the women on Easter morning, so there's, there's the sad part and there's the happy part. And we'll start with the happy part that starts halfway down the page, Do Not Look Among the Dead, because it goes a little faster. And we'll sing that through a couple times just to give you a chance to get used to it. <clears throat> You're going to have to sing out because I still have a cold. I'm good for about eight words and then I choke up. Do not look among the dead for Christ is risen, God's living word of love that cannot die. Where the word of love is given, flesh and made alive, there Christ shall be and so shall I. Let's do that again. Do not look among the dead for Christ is risen, God's living word of love that cannot die. Where the word of love is given, flesh and blood alive, there Christ shall be and so shall I. Women came early to the tomb to mourn, the stone was rolled away. Where shall we look now for our Lord, they asked, and still we ask the same. <laughs> look among the dead, for Christ is risen, God's loving word of love that cannot die. Where the word of love is given, flesh and made alive, there such shall be the <laughs> I invite you silently and aloud to lift up the prayers that are in your hearts, knowing that God hears them, knowing that our prayers fall into the heart of God like this rain that falls into the earth and turns things green. God, hear us. 
as we lift up our prayer. I pray for Curtis and Jen and Jamie. God, we pray for peace in the world. God, we pray that your spirit of resurrection will fill us always, that the resurrection of Christ will give us courage to love fearlessly, to do justice boldly, to walk humbly with you, with hope and joy. We give thanks that the spirit of resurrection bears us through all our troubles. And we pray that it will help us always to love and to serve in confidence and in joy. We pray, as Jesus taught us, asking you always to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may or may not need to come over and interact with the baptismal water in the bowl. You're getting it all. I planned it that way. But if you want, come and touch the water. Remember your baptism. And be thankful that you were baptized, baptized into the death and the resurrection of Christ. When the sun rose upon the empty tomb, it brought a new day. Everything was changed. There was a new creation. God of God, the resurrection, by the light of Christ's rising, grant us a new day. By the mystery of your grace, raise us up to new life in the spirit of Christ.
Let's join together in this prayer of blessing. Beloved mystery, you have raised Christ from the dead, and with Christ you have raised us to new lives. Give us faith to continually die with Christ, surrendering our lives to you, so that we might be raised with Christ. May the wonderful mystery of resurrection give light to our days, courage to our love, and hope to our hearts. We thank you for the gift of life made always new. This is the day you are created. We rejoice in it. Amen. Dearly beloved, the sun has risen. It's right over there. <laughs> the trees have put out their leaves. They're just really, really tiny still. And you are raised from the dead. You can't see it all yet, but it's all there. Go in the peace and the joy of the sure knowledge that you are baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, brought into the domain of God's beautiful light, transformed always from one degree of glory to another. In the life of the risen Christ, go and serve and rejoice. Go in peace and serve God with joy. Amen. Christ is risen. Come back and dry out at the church if you want. There's breakfast after the first service, and there's still some donuts and coffee here. Spirit.